So Dave, in this section, what we did, we did a standard mechanically attached into the purlin. Correct. So there's a lot of things that really you need to consider. So how far are purlins apart on this building? On this building are five foot. So you can't really just take a five foot half sheet. No. Because what'll happen if you do that? You're going to miss your fasteners down here. Your fast depending on your purlin spacing. So five foot purlin is well the six foot six sheet. Foot sheet, right. Now some buildings have a six foot purlin, right? You'd have to go to an eight, eight foot, foot sheet. sheet. Yeah, so, right. so you're going to have some waste. Mm -hmm. So if, if you could see here, and we can't really the... leave that waste there because what could happen? When this thing moves as it will, believe it or not, that can turn underneath and create a water dam. Or it could flip over on top. Yeah. And I've seen occasions where six, seven, eight year old roof guys have done that. And over time, that membrane's curled under there. It's got so stiff, it actually started to cut from the underside of the membrane. Could. So yeah, it very well could. So what we had, what happened here was we had to cut off what, maybe six, eight inches? Six this. inches actually. Yeah. From, yeah so that. as you can see down there, the guys have already, this is our where our fasteners are in our purlin, because remember, can't lose that purlin. Absolutely not. So we always talk about never chalking line on TPO, right? You don't want to do that. But this is going to be under the seam. It's not going to be in the weld area. So it's not it's not the end of the world here. No. We really have no other option to do this. <laughs> so we got to make sure all these fasteners are into the purlin or not into the pan. Right. Now, there's all kinds of ways you could do this. And I think what the guys did, they found out where their purlin was in relationship to the width of their sheet. And they measured from the purlin and snapped a line to run the edge of the sheet out so they know it was nice and straight. Then they came back and found the purlin and actually snapped her line on, on oh, top yes. of the sheet. Yes. So you got to keep it straight. And one thing that you, you can't do is if you're running a six foot sheet on a five foot purlin, right? You hit the purlin and then you let the extra hang over. Because when we tested FM, we test with a six inch seam that contains the plate and fastener and the weld. If you're farther than that, like letting it run wild, right. now you don't have the wind uplift because of the correlation between the fastener and the weld. So let me ask you this. Why couldn't I just take my sheet and have the lap go over and then cut off the factory edge? Would you really want to do that? You wouldn't want to call it factory edge because now you're using the cut edge sealant. Down a whole length. The whole length. So salvage the cut edge, get rid of the stuff that's getting buried. Absolutely. Now, is there any advantages this to the other sections? I don't know that it's an advantage. I think it's just another option for you. Just another option depending on what you're bidding Right. If you don't have an induction welder, this is about all you can do. And the fastening pattern is going to vary depending on the width and the height of the building, where you're at in the country. Yeah. That's going to become a factor shortly. The width of the, of the purlins. Yep. So when we get this all wrapped up, once we get all this covered, we're going to go back and tell how we tied all this together, correct? Perfect. I'm Dave. And I'm Wally. Check out our videos at gif.com slash roofing it right.